All right, we're live on the air, my friends. Spreaker and Cash Box. Church says, Amen, Amen, and Hallelujah, friends. The Wild Live News Podcast, Pastor, it's a life. Having coffee in the mood of the spirit, my friend. That's all I say. When the spirit moves you, you got to move. How you doing? It's Friday. Finally. We made it to the weekend. And uh, I'm going to put this off till about uh, 3.30. Yeah, the spirit was like, no, you better go on right now. Still in the process of it. Wow. Are you there, my friend? Are you with me for your Friday afternoon? We are on the on the air live around the world. Save the souls. One Are you ready? Are you ready? It's coming. We are live on the air. We're going to take a look at the uh, chapter 4 in Galatians, as well as a short history of the Holy Bible, friends. And you got to, now we're going to continue this. Uh, and, uh, you know, keep moving on this podcast because this message is really good. There's a lot in there. So I hope you brought your pens, papers, notebook, tablets, uh, highlighters. And did I mention some pens, my friends? Because you're going to need them. Lots of stuff in there. Lots of good information. Uh, When I saw this, I was like, yeah, that's definitely, definitely the next podcast message I need to bring out. And uh, so that's what I'm doing. Amen. Hang on. I'm caught up. Hang on here. You know, so much going on, friends. So much going on. Well, let's get into it. What are you doing, my friends? Are you ready? Amen. And my church says, <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. It's our Friday Live podcast message. Now, don't forget, uh, I'm going to jump on about 430 at Blog Talk Radio with Facebook Live Anchor. After that, uh, take a little bit of break in there between. And then Anchor, YouTube, and probably Tumblr. I don't know what's going on in that channel. It's not doing so well. We're praying on it that it uh, comes out of its uh, sleep problem or whatever, the technical issues that's going on with that channel, friends. Oh, and then probably close out with Twitter. Uh, what do we got? Twitter and Periscope, friends. Well, we're here live. Amen. And it is a blistery, cold uh, afternoon. Uh, out at the farm, and uh, that's okay. Sit back, relax, get your copy, your Bible, your big book of love, of course, pens, papers, notebook, tablets, your checklist. Amen. Because I've got a lot to give you, as I usually do. And like I said, I was just kind of sitting there, kind of working on some notes, and Spirit said, No, you better get on there. Uh, and, uh, you know, do your message. So I'm glad, my friends, like I said, I am glad to uh, be here and uh, glad to deliver this message to you. Hopefully you guys, you know, like I always say, hopefully it touches your hearts, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, you get something out of this. Well, we got the shout out list. I've got the armor of God, of course, the sinner's prayer of salvation. And uh, so much more. So, why don't you say, friends, why don't we just open up with prayer? Amen. And uh, 
Yeah. Let's get into it, friends. Hey, man. Friday afternoon. Uh, like I said, Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast. Pastor Rick Rell here. We're getting into it. Coffee. Big book of love. Friends, so much messages to give you. We're going to take a look at Galatians chapter 4, if you if you want. And uh, then we're going to go take a look. Let me get my my other messages here. I was, uh, was kind of cleaning up. Amen. All right. Uh, let's open up with prayer, shall we? Amen. Uh, Heavenly Father, I just come before you today as I give you uh, honor, glory, and praise, and just thank you uh, for what you've provided and what you've given me. You know, just uh, everything you've uh, shown me, and and uh, you know, you called me into this mission, and I gladly accepted it, gladly taken it. Uh, As I just move forward day by day uh, in the calling uh, and uh, just preach your word. I just uh, thank you always for just having an opportunity to be in your word and preach the word and teach your word. God, as you have called me to do this, you know, your spirit's always welcome here, Father, as uh, I just keep moving and doing this message. Uh, And uh, thank you. Just thank you. You know, and Father, too, I, I just want to lift up my family, my friends, everybody connected, everybody listening, can hear these messages, you know, just uh, touch your hearts, God. I, You know, let them, uh, let them reach out to you and uh, uh, just be surrounded by your angels and your comfort, God, in their time of struggles, uh, strife, panic, whatever's going on. Uh, just lift them out of that, God. Just touch it, touch their hearts, touch their souls, and and uh, guide them. God, I, I just again, I thank you so much for this opportunity. As uh, you know, as I as I just continue to do your message, continue to do your work, uh, no matter what, as I move forward. God, I call us out, and I and I praise uh, praise you so much, and. Uh, and I just want to, you know, in Jesus' name, you know, I get tongue-tied, God, but, uh, you know, in my heart, wanna, what uh, you want me to do, and I thank you for that. So, I, I just I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, my friends, what's going on? Where's my church? Amen. The church is excited and ecstatic to be here. Uh, <laughs> friends. It's Friday. You made it through the weekend. I think you're happy about that. Amen. Well, we're set up in the studio. It is kind of a rain-snow mix. Uh, you know, kind of not a good day to be outside hanging out, you know. So if you do have to travel or you do have to uh, go out and about, friends, uh, travel in mercies. Uh, we're sending uh, prayers from the studio, and uh, you know, be safe out there, friends. Amen. And amen. All right, my friends, what's going on? It's Friday. Did I mention it's Friday? I did. We're excited, friends. Ecstatic to be on the air, and I hope you, you know, I hope you guys can take some notes on this. Spirit laid this on me, and. Uh, took it back old school friends <laughs> amen and boy am i glad to give it to you glad to share it uh out of the king james as i usually am i know i probably you now in the next set of messages and stuff friends i'm going to be coming out of the uh wi- well it's going to be the wisdom of sirach and i bet you a lot of people never heard of it but it's in the orthodox study bible friends and that's where i'm going to go for next week's podcast message just a couple of Bible studies out of there, friends. Don't forget, my friends, coming up at Blog Talk Radio and Facebook, we're going to continue our Bible study series as we look at the book of Hebrews. And no, that's not Hebrews coffee. That is Hebrews. <laughs> They're excited already. I know. That's my excited crowd right there, my excited church there. They're so ecstatic about this word, friends. Amen. Where's my other one? Where's my other one here? <laughs> See, they thought that was funny. Well, amen. I did too, so. 
friends, are we excited to hear the Word of God? Uh, take a deep breath, get your coffee, stretch out, my friends. It's time. That's right, it's time. Well, let's see. What are we going to do? We're going to jump straight into the shout-out list. All right. And if you'd like to make the shout-out list, well, you guys know what to do. It's not hard. Uh, jump on there, friends. Uh, Worldwide Live Ministry Podcast at gmail.com, our brand-new official email address for the ministry. You know, you guys can get a hold of us anytime, 24-7. It's all right. That's what we do. Amen. Did I get away from my microphone again? I'm maneuvering. Amen. Fixing my, trying to fix my notes here. Amen. All right. Well, friends, like I said, if you'd like to get on the shout-out list, you know what to do. Just hit us up at any one of the podcast channels. We would love to get you on that list, friends. Amen. Let me move the pulpit up here and fix my chair. Amen. All right. Uh, ministry shout-out list time, my friends, all my family, friends, visitors, and viewers at all the ministry networks, channels, and pages worldwide. My good friend, uh, Pastor Oni, on my CBN and uh, Midori over at Periscope in Japan, uh, pretty amazing. I uh, always talk about them. Uh, good support of the ministry channel here, friends. Konnichiwa, domo arigato, my precious, precious friends in Japan. Uh, it's pretty, pretty exciting, pretty cool stuff. Uh, my sister in Christ, Miss Sophie, uh, my CBN. You hear me talking about her a lot, friends. Uh, like I said, uh, I'm excited because I'm going to uh, set up a long-distance international Skype testimony interview. Uh, it's it, Friends, you got to stick around to watch this. I'm excited. I can't wait. Uh, I'm working out, uh, uh, you know, technicalities and all that stuff and, you know, time zones and all that. So it's going to be... It's going to be early morning there and late night here, so as she is in uh, Switzerland. So, but that's going to be exciting. I'm, I'm, I can't wait for that. And uh, you can stay tuned. I'll post it when I get ready. Uh, amen. My brother Mark, over at the Christian Watchers of the 2017 2024 Solar Eclipses group uh, at Facebook. Boy, I appreciate you guys uh, letting me post these podcasts up there. Uh, give me a platform uh, to get this message out, and uh, I do truly appreciate that. You guys are awesome, and uh, so go over there, shake a hand, meet a friend, and uh, mind the rules, friends, would you? Be nice. Just be nice. Amen. Uh, of course, all my sisters in Christ at Facebook and all the media channels. Miss Christina, Susan, and Laura, of course, everybody there. You guys are awesome. I appreciate the continued support there. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Well, we got my powerhouse sisters uh, at Facebook and YouTube, Miss Tiffany Blackwell Ministries. Darling, I love the messages. They are powerful. Stay tuned, friends. Always got something from the Spirit to give you. So, Miss Tiffany, I do appreciate that and uh, appreciate the connection there and and uh, just grateful to have you on there. So, And, you know, to share your messages, too. You know, it's just so awesome. Amen. Well, we got Miss Jackie. Uh, again, you guys have seen the podcast or messages at uh, doing a midnight scope there Monday through Sunday, Twitter and Periscope Live. She's got the pages over there and some links, and uh, you guys can check that out. Uh, so check it out. Amen. We got uh, my fellow iHeartRadio podcast brethren, Pastor Michael Holcomb, Bible Days Ministries, Monday through Sunday. Uh, so many links and, and channels, friends. Got to go check it out if you want to hear another powerful word of God. Well, we got my good brother and sister down in Ennis, Texas. 
my CBN also, uh, internet radio broadcasting, and then uh, got a Bible college down there, so we're in there, up there, somewhere, in there. Anyway, it's in Annis, Texas. Go check it out. iTunes and Spotify, K1 95.5 FM. That is my radio voice, the power radio, friends. J. David Ford and his uh, amazing wife, uh, Rose. So go scope it out, friends. Snoop around, I dare you. Go ahead, check it out. Amen. Good stuff there, friends. That's the Power Radio, iTunes, and Spotify, plus so much more. There you go, friends. Well, who else we got on the on the list? Because I'm getting ready to do this message here. Uh, repentance, a message for the church, more like a warning for the lukewarm churches, friends. Uh, it kind of jumps into John and uh, some stuff in Jonah. So stay tuned. I'm getting ready to warm that message back up and rattle some cages. Good grief. It, it was an amazing message. Rodney Francis, Pastor Rodney Francis Ministry, uh, all the way out in New Zealand, Parampa Rampu. That is a real town, friends. I'm not making that up. Uh, <laughs> although it is a difficult word to say, it is a real town, friends. It's a real city uh, out in New Zealand. So scope that out. Check it out because I'm getting ready to blast that message, friends. I'm excited about it. I've been going over the notes, uh, you know, making sure everything is intact. And uh, so I'll post that, friends, as we do uh, two daily conversation uh messages or yeah daily conversations and messages the new series continued uh twice a day uh at our spreaker cast box right here live and then we jump over to uh somewhere i guess twitter <laughs> periscope live we're gonna have to work on that scheduling here uh, as we continue our upgrades and updates amen so, yeah, it's coming, friends. It's coming. Be patient. You know, God always, well, he gives us patience, friends. We don't always operate in that patience. You know, the gifts of the Spirit or the fruits of the Spirit. And no, I didn't call you fruits, friends. I said the fruits of the Spirit. we got to operate in that and, uh, you know, just be in that. I know it's difficult. It's not It's not easy. Uh <laughs> Our best, you know, it's it's not one of our best virtues, friends. Uh, really, uh, honestly, friends, it's it's just not one of our best. But we do, you know, we do got to work on that, friends. It's it's a daily, uh, just a daily, uh, ha- you know, work thing. We got to just work through that and and practice that every day, uh, with everything. Uh, so. There you go, friends. You're still in the know. I'm still not driving. I gave up that wheel a long time ago. I said, Jesus, Jesus, take the wheel. And he did. See, you ask and thou shalt receive. Amen. Oh, what do you got? <laughs> what do we got? Wait a minute. I know my favorite scripture. Well, one of them. You know, I got a million of them. Uh, take a look over at Psalm 23, my friends. And there's our goats getting excited because uh, they're getting excited about the Word of God, friends. Amen. Uh, just chilling, having some coffee. And uh, Psalm 23, friends. Can we do that real quick? I'm gonna, let me take a look at this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yay, this is my favorite. No, I'm not going to sing it. I might have a few bars, but no, I'm not going to sing it, friends. But it is part of my, I love this uh, this part right here in this verse. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, or shadow, it's not plural, it's singular, right? Right. I think that's it, shadow of death. I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. See, he's got two things that are comforting. Thy rod and thy staff. Now, I wonder if they're the same. I'm going to have to investigate into that. 
They comfort me. Whatever is God, it's comfort, friends. Thou preparedest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. There's your memory verse for the day, friends. Amen. Armor of God. Uh, now, you remember, you got two sets of homework in this part here. So, amen. I'll get my copy. And our goat's going ballistic out there. I don't know what his problem is. He's tripping out. I don't know. He needs to be calm right now. Uh, Armor God, friends. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Uh, are you there? Did you find it? Amen. Finally, my brethren and sisters, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that we... Or ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore. Because there's more. we got to do more on this. Having your loins girt about with truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. That's right. And don't forget, 1 Peter 5, 8, 9, For your adversary of the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may destroy. Got to keep our armor on, friends. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which we know is the Word of God. It is our Bible, our life. Amen. And uh, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication. Uh, for all saints, not just a few, but all. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, because God does not give us the spirit of fear, my friends. Uh, amen. Power, love, and Sound mind. Amen. Well, there you go. Uh, so you have the homework, friends. You know, if I'm getting it from the Spirit, I'm going to be kind and rewind and share it with you. Share the love, friends. Romans 10, 9, 21. Amen. Well, did I mention it's Friday? Maybe a few times, right? <laughs> Amen. All right, now I'm trying not to sneeze. I've been battling this cold, and then my ribs acted up again. I re-injured them, uh, taking care of some, uh, you know, some maneuvering here. We're doing some uh, uh, cleanup process here in the studio, uh, getting some track lighting and uh, putting some more ceiling stuff up. So I'm excited about that. It's going to take a process, but that's okay. Amen. I don't mind. God's time, my friends. God's time. Uh, church, are you excited? There we go. The church is excited, my friends. <laughs> Class is in session. Sorry about that, friends. I was going to sneeze and cough at the same time. I don't know how that's possible, but anyway, I almost did. So, you know, it's uh, a little colder out here. Uh, I think i seen some ducks with jackets on, uh, with some hoodies, walking around with some hoodies, with their, getting their lattes or something, I don't know, uh, I know, where's, where's my comedy part? <laughs> I thought that was funny, I, anyway, it's so cold, how cold is it? The ducks had jackets, 
<laughs> and hoodies on. Anyway, friends, let's have some fun. Let's get into the Bible message as it is Friday. And uh, excited, feeling a lot better. I had to uh, wrap my ribs up a little bit. And, uh, you know, the devil's got to do a lot more than to uh, stop this message, friends. I always tell you that that's true. Perseverance. The devil hates perseverance. He doesn't like it too much. But that's okay because I don't I don't mind. I don't care. He needs to hear the word. Amen. All right, so as the spirit was going I was going through this stuff, the spirit guided me over to or showed me uh quite a bit actually, but I want to look at Galatians chapter four, friends. If you will. So go ahead and grab your Bibles. Like I said, this is the Bible study and we are having we're having some church on a Friday afternoon. That's pretty cool stuff, friends. Amen. All right. Chapter 4. Let's take a look at it, friends, out of the King James. And then I'll get into the message here because I wanted to give you that too uh, as we're looking at the short history of the Bible here, friends. Amen. Chapter 4. Galatians. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law. Now, remember the side scriptures I gave you, friends. I uh, really need to watch these because uh, it's got kind of good comparisons here. Genesis 3.15 and Daniel 9.24. Amen. Now, verse 5, to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons and daughters, God hath sent forth the spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, Romans 5, 5. Wherefore thou art no more a servant. Now, did you hear that, friends? Uh, right there in the Scriptures, Verse 7, Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son and daughter. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. How be it then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them, which by nature are no gods. Romans one twenty five. But now, after that, ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto ye desire against to be in bondage. See, we are not under bondage. We're not under the law. We're under grace, and that's the difference. Uh, amen. Thank God we are, friends. You know, really, when you think about it, uh, that's something to, to really kind of deep think about. Uh, ye observe days and months and times and years. Amen. I, I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am am as ye are ye have not injured me at all ye know as i forgot to do my my little notes here hang on here friends all right ye know how through infirmity of the flesh i preached the gospel unto you at the first and my temptation, which was in my flesh, ye despised not, not rejected, or nor rejected, 
but received me as the angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Where is then this blessed or this blessedness you speak of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? They zealously affect you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you, and you might uh, affect them. But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing, and not only when I am present with you. My little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. This is 20. Amen. Uh, Tell me, ye, the desire, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? Give me a minute here, my friends. Amen. Sorry about the quietness here, friends. I just uh, forgot to take a couple of notes here. And I uh, want to get caught up on it. All right, there we go. So much to do. All right, so 22. Uh, For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise, Uh, which things are an allegory. For these are the two covenants. You catch that, friends? The two covenants of God. All right. So if you look at 24 again, friends, uh, as it says, which things are an allegory? For these are the two covenants, the one from the Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Hagar, in Deuteronomy 33 and 2, uh, amen. All right. So, you look at Hagar here, and then 25 for this, uh, Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. Uh, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with their children. Now think about that, friends. Think how deep this stuff goes. For, let's see, but Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Isaiah 2-2 uh, and Revelation 3-12. Think about the connections in all this, friends. Amen. All right. So, for it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not. Break forth and cry, Thou that travailest not, for the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. Amen. Interesting connection here, friends. But, as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the Spirit, even so it is now, in Genesis 21.9. All right. Nevertheless, what saith the Scripture? 
cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. Hmm. Now, just think about that connection, friends. As it is then, it is now. Uh, because of that uh, situation that took place, uh, it's the whole generation of it, uh, which is pretty amazing. Now, this is the uh, part of the children of promise. So as we look at 31, So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Uh, so in John 8, 36. So I just wanted to, I just wanted to bring that up because it's very interesting uh, connection. Uh, you know, as I, I'm just praying... Uh, you know, from the, getting this from the Spirit. I'm praying on it, but I'm getting this from the Spirit uh, that uh, my laptop went out. Uh, just the connection. So, yeah, I was just praying on this, and I was like, this is really, really deep. There's a meaning in here, and I need to read this. I need to share this. Uh, you know, and I was, like I said, I was going to go ahead and go into uh, basically just redo Galatians, but uh, you know I'm gonna pray on that, and it'll probably go back and redo it again. I just there's so much in there that uh, I wanted to share that with you. Um. So there is some homework in there, friends. Now remember, let's drop down here real quick. Um, as I was looking at this. Let's drop over to chapter 5 uh, and go to verse 18. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, uh, and down the side chapters, Colossians 3, 5. Uh, man. Uh, okay. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, in 20, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedations, and heresies, heresies. Uh, and 21, it continues. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like of the which. I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not... Inherit the kingdom of God. First Corinthians six nine and Colossians three six. Now talking about the fruit of the spirit. Uh, so you can write this down if you haven't already. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Romans 6.6 6. If we believe in the Spirit... Uh, okay, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Somebody needs to be hearing this. Amen. I know there was a reason that I spoke this out. If you live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another or envying one another. Oh, that was that was good. All right. So, 
Let me get my notes here. And we're looking at Galatians. And we're looking at chapter 5. So, let me make sure I got my notes together here, like I said. Uh, amen. Now, I'm praying over our light situation because our lights have been flickering. Uh, we've got a pretty bad storm out here. So, that's basically why I jumped on this podcast when the, when the Spirit told me, hey, you need to go ahead and get on there uh, instead of waiting it out. That's what I did. So, amen. So, I hope you got your notes, friends, because... Man, oh man, oh man, this is good stuff, friends. So, I'm going to be getting into the, our, our study of the day. Uh, new series continued, Daily Conversations and Messages. And uh will be bringing this message right up here. I, I hope you're ready, friends. You got your notes from yesterday, or the day before, I guess, two days ago? It was it two days ago? Um, You need to get, you know, I, I want to give this message... And there's a lot, friends. I'm telling you, it goes all the way in the whole entire Bible. It talks and gives the categories. Uh, like I said, the Pentateuch books, the books of the Old Testament, books of the Bible contain, uh, the historical books. So you're going to need to watch this. And, and uh, you know, I'll go, I'll go slow on this, friends. We're not going to spend a whole lot, but we're going to just, I mean, I, you know, I guess we spend a week on it. But... Uh, uh, we just got to get this message. I mean, it's good for me too, friends. Like I said, I I always enjoy the Bible studies and what the Spirit's laying on me, uh, just because it's so deep and it's just stuff that I forgot and I need to go back and redo myself. I'm preaching to somebody and I'm preaching to myself, my friends. Come on now, get excited about the Word. Amen. So we left off. I'm trying to balance my coffee here. We left off with, uh, as we just finished, I'll, I'll recap this so just so you guys can keep tabs of where we're at here. Now, the canon of the Old Testament was formed first. This was done by the Jews 400 years before Christ was born. Led by divine guidance, Jewish scholars gathered together all of Israel's sacred writings and developed one complete work. After the death of Jesus, God led men to write the Gospels and the letters that would someday become the New Testament. Religious councils met and discussed the writings over several hundred years before the final canon was agreed upon and became arranged in its present form, which is really good. Now, it's kind of a background history, friends, is what I'm getting at here. Amen. All right. Now, of course, there have been many different translations of the Bible. The first ones were made into Greek and Latin. From the best of these, one called the Septuagint, made in at, or at Alexandria, Egypt, about 270 B.C. to 150 B.C. It became an important source document. Amen, friends. Hang on here. I always got to maneuver something with my microphone. Amen, and eventually it'll settle. All right. Now, the chapter and verse subdivisions of the Bible, uh, the descriptive headings of chapters, and the presence of italics or sloping letters in the text did not exist in the original. The division into chapters, which was for greater ease of reading and quotation was made in the 13th century by Cardinal Hugo or Archbishop Langton. Amen. So that's why I'm giving you all the messages and the notes here, friends. Uh, at the later period, probably A.D. 1551, one Robert Stevens made the division into verses. 
they are very imperfect and sometimes greatly obscure or greatly obscure the meaning. Now, the presence of italics is due to the fact that in many instances it was necessary to introduce words to make clear uh, a meaning which could not be translated easily or to supply deficiencies due to in, uh, differences in language. All right, so we come to number three here, friends. What the books of the Bible contain. So I'll give you a minute to write that stuff down. What the books of the Bible contain. This is uh, number three here. Now the Holy Bible is divided into two great parts called the Old Testament, as you know, and the New Testament. There's one and two. Each is complete and distinct in itself as far as the subjects treated and concerned. Hang on. My timeout is on my timeout list. I don't know what to do with that. Uh, but through both run God's revelation of himself to man, his promise of salvation, uh, his laws, amen. And, okay, so let me go back over this again. I'm going to break this down into some ca- in the categories here. Uh, both or but through both run God's revelation of himself to man, so that's one uh two his promise of salvation uh his laws, which is three, and four wishes for man to follow. I told you there's a lot here, friends. So we're just going to run this study about an hour. Just a little bit more time here, friends. And then uh, I'm going to get ready and jump on the next podcast here at 4.30. I wanted to make sure I get enough rest and get in between here. So that's what we're going to do, friends. All right, number four. Now, this is going to be the fourth one here. The books of the Old Testament. Okay, that's your headline there. Now, the 39 books of the Old Testament are divided into four subdivisions. So, watch this, friends. Okay? I get it, too. And that's what I that's what I got to pay attention to. And really, really learn and know... The Bible. How can I preach it if I don't know it? So I'm getting a little back into my theology here a little bit, friends, and I hope this helps. So we're at the subtopic of the books of the Old Testament. Now, the 39 books. uh, Write that down too, friends. The 39 books of the Old Testament that are divided into, they're divided. Now, we're talking a division here. Divided into four subdivisions. The Pentateuch, the historical books, the politic or poetical books, and the prophetical books. Now, here we go into one, or A. The Pentateuch contains the earliest Hebrew history and the Hebrew law as laid down by Moses. Now, it consists of the five books. Okay, the first one you know is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So that's your first five books. Now, this is divided up, like it says, in the Pentateuch, 
the historical books, the po- uh, poetical books, and the prophetical books. Now, the Pentateuch contains the earliest Hebrew history and the Hebrew law, as was laid down by Moses. It consists of five books. Now, you got Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, your memory script or your book scripture memory. The historical books contain the further history of the Hebrews up to the time of the writing of the Old Testament, ceased. They consist of 12 books. My, oh my. I love this stuff. All right, so here we go in your next set of books. Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. Because, you know, I got drilled on that a few times. What's the first five to ten books of the Bible? I don't know. I that God didn't give me that. I didn't, you know, he didn't give it to me to memorize it. He, I just know where to go when I need to find scriptures and stuff. So there, there's your first uh, pile of the Old Testament books. Uh, and the first uh, Pentateuch, we're talking about uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Now we're going into the historical, historical books, uh, and it continues into the Hebrew uh, or the history of the Hebrews. Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. All right, you're doing good here, friends. Now, the poetical book, or books, uh, contains such of the poetry and philosophy of the Hebrews has been preserved. They consist of five books. Here we go again with the five more books here, friends. Uh, So Job, the five books of the Psalms, because there are five books to look at, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, the Song of Solomon, or the Wisdom, also known as the Canticles. That's C-A-N-T-I-C-L-E-S, friends. That is the Canticles. Amen. Now, the prophetical book, or books, uh, contain the warnings and utterances of the Hebrew prophets. Now, there are 17 of them. Okay, do you write that down, friends. There are 17 of them. So it's broken down like this, friends. Five major prophets and 12 minor prophets. Now, like I said, a little bit of theology here to get you updated. Now the major ones; these are talking about the major pro, the major uh, prophets here: uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. All right. Now the minor, uh, the minor prophets are Hosea. Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, or Cook. I guess it's Habakkuk, right? Uh, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. That's interesting stuff. I bet you uh, if we spend a little time in that, friends, a little bit of theology, a little bit of, you know, just some under basic Bible understanding friends uh pretty amazing i bet you this is why uh this is why the spirit laid this on me uh and uh you know showed me this because if i'm going to preach it i better know what i'm talking about right amen all right 
more notes. So we're looking at uh, still in, in the same one, friends. Let's go over here a little bit. Five. Now we're still in. Now we're in the Pentateuch books, which is obviously the Old Testament, right? So we're still kind of in the Old Testament, checking it out. The Pentateuch books, and you can spell that at P E N T A T E U C H. The Pentateuch books, the Old Testament, or the Old Testament canon. Now Genesis, that's the first one. It, as its name implies, tells of the beginnings of things, how the world was made uh, and man placed upon it, and the fall of man through sin, in yielding to temptation. Now, God, of God's original promise to man of salvation through righteousness. Uh, it also tells of the dispersion of man through the flood and the beginning of the history of the Hebrews. Genesis contains 50 chapters. Hang on, my laptop keeps shutting down. Uh, and was written by Moses about 1500 B.C. Interesting stuff here. All right, number two. I have to rewrite my numbers here. All right, so now we're looking at Exodus. It, Exodus gets its name from the fact that it tells the departure of Exodus of the Hebrews from Egypt. It also tells of the wanderings of the Hebrews in the wilderness and the giving of the law to the Israelites or Israelites by God through Moses. It was written almost certainly by Moses uh, about the year 1485 B.C. and contains 40 chapters. A lot of chapters there, friends. Amen. Uh, Leviticus. Uh, it's a continuation of the book of Exodus. It takes its name from the fact that it contains the ceremonial and religious law, the performance of which was entrusted to the tribe of the Levites. It contains 27 chapters, a lot of chapters too, and was apparently written by Moses about the year 1470 B.C. Uh, numbers is so, is so named because it specifically tells of the census of number or numbering of the Hebrews. It also tells the history of the Hebrews on their journey after leaving Egypt. And it contains 36 chapters and apparently was written by Moses about 1460. B C. Now, kind of right before Leviticus, so he actually he looks like it. He did uh, fourteen sixty, fourteen seventy. So ten years before Leviticus. Interesting. Uh, Deuteronomy. Now, the last book of the Pentateuch. Now, this is the final or the last book of uh, the Pentateuch here. It gets its name from the fact that it contains a second account of the giving of the law. It exhorts to obedience. It contains also an account of the death of Moses within sight of the promised land. The book contains 34 chapters and was written partially by Moses and partially by Joshua. So they actually wrote this by two authors. Uh, the date of writing is about 1450 B.C. So, again, before uh, early, friends, really early. Uh, interesting. Uh, so, there you go, friends. All right, let's start uh, number six here, and I'll, I'll uh, stop right here just a little bit here. But let's get the subtopic out. We're at number six, the historical 
books. Amen. All right. I'm rewriting my notes here. All right. So the historical books. Joshua. This book begins the historical books. This is the beginning, the starting point. Uh, amen. Amen. Lots of notes on this, friends. So Joshua is the beginning of the historical books. Uh, this book begins the historical books. It tells of the entrance of the Israelites into the promised land. And the conquest of it, it contains 24 chapters uh, and was written partially or partly by Joshua and partly by some unknown author. That's interesting right there. Uh, about 1410 B.C. All right. So let's uh let's see. Let's do this here, friends. Uh I'll give you judges, friends. Write that down. Judges, these are all the books of the Bible here as we break these down. Now, judges is to the Old Testament what the Acts of the Apostles is to the New Testament. It tells of the troubled times through which the Israelites or Israelites passed after the death of Joshua. After the death of Joshua. And the raising up by God of leaders and reformers for the ruling and leading of the nation. It brings the student up to the time of Eli. And probably was written largely by Samuel. It contains 21 chapters and covers a period of about 300 years. All right, so write that down, and there you go, friends. Right in the books, uh, as we continue our Bible study conversations and daily messages. Now, I really wanted to get this out. God spoke on my heart about this. The Spirit spoke on my heart about this. And, uh, you know, as I as we all kind of struggle to understand the book, you know, the Bible here, uh, amen, trying to get my notes here. As we all struggle to understand the Bible, I mean, I hey, my hand's raised, friends. My hand is raised. I struggle to understand it. As long as I've been doing this, uh, I, you know, I spend as much time, quality time in the Bible as possible. But uh, like I said, there is so much, and it's just deep, friends. We just really need to be get a really good understanding of the Bible. So that's what I'm doing. I love doing it. I'm glad to do it. Uh, so we're gonna take a look tomorrow. Later on tomorrow, uh, well, back here again, probably about 2.33 or so, uh, we're going to continue as we look at Ruth, uh, Samuel, and uh, Kings, and so on. Uh, I love this this book. So, and it goes into Chronicles, and Ezra, and Nehemiah, and Esther. So, we are in the historical books, friends. Number six, historical books. And we'll continue this conversation tomorrow, friends. All right. I like to said my life is flickering in the studio, so I'm praying that they just stay on and stay the course, friends. <laughs> so I'll be back, friends. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me, getting a little bit of Bible education here. Uh, really cool stuff. Glad to do it. Glad to share it, friends. Stay tuned. It'll be posted all over the Internet uh, on all the network channels and pages. Uh, I'll see you soon, friends. Amen, and thanks for listening. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for your continued 
continued support, friends. All right, my brothers and sisters. I'll see you on the next podcast, friends. Have a great Friday, and uh, we're going into Hebrews, friends, so grab your Bibles and uh, check out the book of Hebrews Bible study, friends. Amen. I'll talk to you soon, friends. Amen.